One of the questions we field most often is, what Chromebook should I get for you know, fill in the blank amount of money? So whether it's budget Chromebooks or high-end Chromebooks, usually people come to us with a budget and say, hey, what's the best Chromebook I can get for that price? So today, at this point in the year, in 2019, we wanna answer that for you. Today's video is brought to you by Bridge and we've used their products for quite some time now and are really fond of them. If you're not familiar, Bridge makes keyboards for tablets in general. They make keyboards for the Pixel Slate, they make them for the iPads and iPad Pros, they make them for the Microsoft Surface and they're just premium quality keyboards. They're Bluetooth backlit keys and they even have special function keys for each different operating system. We can't say enough good things about their products. They're absolutely premium, they're absolutely top notch, and we love them, and I think that you would love them too. If you'd like to learn more about them, go to chromeunbox.com forward slash bridge. That's bridge with a Y. So if you're here, you're looking for a Chromebook, and you have a budget in mind, let me give you a couple caveats as we enter into this, because I don't want to waste a lot of your time, I don't want to waste a lot of my time, I want to tell you which Chromebook you should buy at the different price points. So first off, we're going to kind of break this up, zero to $299, and then we're going to go $300 to $600, and then $600 and up, and you can categorize those however you like. Some people think that $600 plus means it's a high-end Chromebook. In my head, that's still kind of mid-range, but that's all subjective, it doesn't matter. We're, we're gonna cut it up into three different price points and then talk about a few Chromebooks that are worth looking at for you because different Chromebooks have different things and different processors and different little bells and whistles. We wanna make sure that you know about those, but then in each category, we're gonna say, hey, we think this is probably the best Chromebook right now that you can buy. Second thing you need to know is that we're not going to be talking MSRP here. These Chromebooks in general, I think almost all of them on the list, have been on sale at least for a few weeks at a time, if not months at a time. So don't buy any of these Chromebooks, honestly, at MSRP. Wait for them to go on sale. And as we talk through the prices, we're going to talk through the prices that we normally see these things on sale for. So let's start at the bottom end. So the zero to $299, we'll call it affordable Chromebook category. The first two I want to mention are from Lenovo. So you have the C330 and the S330. They're both affordable and a lot of times you can find them under 200 bucks. The C330 has a better feature set though. It's got a touchscreen, it's IPS, it's convertible. Uh, it's only 11.6 inches, but in general, it's been one of the go-to Chromebooks for us to uh, give to people whenever they're looking for something that's cheaper for their kids to have around the house. Uh, with that MediaTek processor inside, it actually handles Android apps pretty well. And with the touchscreen, if the Android app isn't updated to use the keyboard and trackpad, it gets along just fine because you can flip it into tablet mode and go at it. The S330, that's kind of its like cousin, is a 14 inch version. We've done a review of that and talked about how well it runs Roblox and you can get the thing for like 160 bucks. So you're looking for ultra cheap, it does do that. Screen is terrible on it, uh, but it's got nice uh, keyboard and nice trackpad and it does the basic Chromebook stuff pretty well. The other two we've got in the kind of honorable mention category are the Asus 523 and Asus 423. Those two devices, uh, they're all plastic, but they have a Pentium chip inside, four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of internal storage. You can get it with the full HD screen. Uh, you can actually get the 523, which is the 15 inch version with a touch screen and backlit keys and all that kind of stuff for less than 300 bucks but it's an all plastic shell and it's it's kind of cheap plastic too. So it's a little wobbly, picks up scratches pretty easily. And that leads me to what I would consider our winner in this category, which is the Acer Chromebook 15. Same exact internal setup as that Asus I was just talking about. Pentium chip, four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of internal storage, but get this, backlit keyboard, great speakers, IPS panel, touch screen, and an all aluminum build. I mean. The spec sheet sounds like something that should cost a lot more. And honestly, when it first came out, it kind of did, but it's dropped in price pretty dramatically. And it's just a great Chromebook and at under 300 bucks, easily, easily the best one you can buy in this category. Okay, moving on to the kind of middle class here, we've got the $300 to $599 Chromebooks. And this is really kind of the meat of your Chromebook selection in general. You don't have a ton of Chromebooks that go over that price bracket. And there's not a lot of people that wanna pay that much more for a Chromebook than 600 bucks. So you're gonna see a lot of these Chromebooks that show up on our website on sale a lot. So in general, 
you could probably buy these Chromebooks at MSRP or on sale in this category and still end up in that $300 to $600 range. So let's talk through a few of them. In general, they share a lot in common, lots of aluminum builds here. Some of them have pins and some don't. Uh, nice screen resolution, so there's nothing under a 1080p at least here. All IPS panels, things that look really nice and are put together well and are fast and have plenty of RAM and plenty of storage. So it's not necessarily that any of these Chromebooks are head and shoulders above another as far as the spec sheet goes. It's just there are some that put the entire package together a little bit better than the next one. So let's talk first about the Samsung Chromebook Plus V2. I really like this Chromebook. It's a little smaller than the others in this category, but again, mostly aluminum, plastic bottom but you get a pen, you get a really nice screen, plenty bright, around 300 nits, um, and it's just a little above a 1080p panel with a great keyboard and a great trackpad and just a nice form factor if you like flipping things into tablet mode. Uh, from HP, you have the X360 and the uh, Chromebook X2. So the X2 is a detachable one, has a similar screen like the Pixelbook, has a pen that comes with it, and the keyboard comes all in the same package, usually less than 500 bucks. Uh, it's, it, got an M3 processor in it, four gigs of RAM, so it gets along pretty well. And then the X360 is one of my favorite Chromebooks in this category for sure. Uh, plenty of power with the i3, four gigs of RAM, uh, 1080p screen. And you're gonna hear that kind of same thing with the Dell and Lenovo, similar processors four or eight gigs of RAM, good amounts of storage, nice 1080p screens, aluminum builds. I mean, there's good stuff to be had here. So if you're just kind of going, hey, this is the money I have and I'm ready to buy one now, maybe you go to Best Buy and just see which one's on sale and choose it because honestly, there's not that much that differentiates all of these Chromebooks. Figure out like if you need a pen or something like that. But the winner here, the one I feel like does stand just a little bit above all the rest in this category is the Asus Chromebook Flip C434 and it is just an amazing looking Chromebook. It's, if you haven't seen the review of it, very tiny bezels around the screen. Again, a 1080p screen, IPS panel, similar to some of these other ones, all aluminum build, a great keyboard, it's backlit. It's just a very unique looking Chromebook. It's almost like a 14 inch Chromebook crammed into a 13 inch chassis. It looks great. It's got the uh, a couple different variations on it. I think the top end variation right now with eight gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage, and the Core M3 processor uh, is, is nicely in this price bracket as well. And when we reviewed it and even put it up against other Chromebooks, it just was the Chromebook to go to uh, if you're looking at spending five to $600. So for sure in this category, the Asus Chromebook C434 is the one you wanna go with. So finally, we come to the $600 and up Chromebook segment. And while while there aren't a lot of people that go and purchase Chromebooks for much more than 600 bucks, these devices are out there. They aren't nearly as many in number as the other divisions here, but in general, if you want just the most premium Chromebook experience, you're gonna have to shell out a little bit more than 600 bucks. And so there are a few we need to talk about. First up, I would put the Lenovo uh, C630, the Yoga Chromebook, the 4K model in this category. And it generally is 700 bucks plus. Uh, it kind of fluctuates all over the place, but all aluminum, backlit keys, 4K screen, and it's the only Chromebook that's out there with a 4K screen. But that 4K screen comes at a cost. It, it hurts performance a little bit and it really hurts battery life. It was the reason it wasn't like my go-to Chromebook because I like the keyboard and the trackpad and the screen looks great. And when it's the only device you've got, it's nice to have that big screen to work from. But man, it really knocks the battery life down to like four to six hours. And for me, using a Chromebook, that's just not a thing I wanna do anymore. But maybe you're not out and about that often and battery life isn't that big of a deal. It's a great Chromebook. So is the Acer Chromebook Spin 13. Though it's been out for a little longer than some of these other Chromebooks, it brings a lot to the table. All aluminum, uh, backlit keyboard, glass trackpad, a stowable, a larger stowable stylus, uh, a great screen, three by two ratio, so similar to the Pixelbook and Pixel Slate. It's got an odd uh, resolution that I never can remember, but it's still a nice and high res, 300 nits of brightness that we've measured. It just checks all the boxes, honestly, and it's a great Chromebook. It's just always been kind of expensive, so in like the eight to nine hundred dollar range. But it dips down from time to time, and when it does, and if it does, it's a very compelling Chromebook too. And then that brings us to the two Chromebooks made by Google, which have always been expensive, and people get upset about them being expensive, but. 
they are built better than just about anything you can get your hands on. So first we'll say Pixel Slate, because you know what I'm gonna put at the top of this, let's be honest. But the Pixel Slate has really grown on me over the last couple months as I kind of have forced myself to use it from time to time just to see how software is coming around. And really Google has worked out so many of the kinks. And I said this when I reviewed it, I've said this in articles, I knew eventually they were gonna work these kinks out and it was gonna change the way at least that I viewed this device. And so when I've paired it now up with the Bridge uh, G-Type keyboard, it actually feels very good in laptop form. The Bluetooth isn't wonky like it was before, and I don't really have any issue working from it, whether it's in my lap or on a desk or whatever. And then when I want to pop it off and use it like a tablet, I get to take advantage of those awesome speakers. And every time I open it, I get to log in with my fingerprint. And honestly, those two things differentiate it from any other Chromebook and make the experience pretty excellent and just holding it in general because it's so well built and balanced and rounded it just makes for a really excellent experience and finally we come to the chromebook in the number one spot unsurprisingly in the 600 plus category and that is the pixelbook and in general regardless of whether you want to say i'm a pixelbook fanboy or anything like that when I get done reviewing any other Chromebook or any other device that I'm enjoying or using for any period of time, I always come back to my Pixelbook. And there are reasons for that. It's not just because it's the thing I use or one of the Chromebooks I own. It just has some things about it that no other Chromebook does. The typing experience, second to none. The trackpad, glass trackpad is great, uh, but the build quality of the thing is just thin, it's light, it looks almost futuristic still, even though it's two years old almost. The screen is great, it's nice and bright, full of colors. I, I do wish that the bezels were a little bit smaller, but honestly, those are small complaints that fade away when you're actually using the device. And so in general, when it comes down to actually getting some stuff done and feeling like I got the most bang for my buck and the device is doing what I need it to do most, the Pixelbook delivers more than any other device that I've ever used. All right, so quick recap before we wrap up. If you're looking to spend less than 300 bucks, Acer Chromebook 15. If you're looking to spend anywhere between 300 and 599, Asus Chromebook Flip C434. And at the top end of the spectrum, $600 plus, Pixelbook is where it's at. But guys, that's been it for this one. If you enjoyed it and we helped you make a purchasing decision, give us a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button down below and make sure and hit the notification bell if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Until next time, we'll see you.